A spherical conductor with radius 40 centimeters has a surface charge density of 20 microcoulombs per square meter. What is the total charge on a sphere? So first let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the sphere. And surrounding the sphere is a Gaussian surface. Now all of the positive charge will lie on the surface of the sphere. And the sphere has a radius which we'll call capital R. The Gaussian sphere on the outside has a radius lowercase r. How can we find the total charge on a sphere? To do that, we need to use the surface charge density. The surface charge density, sigma, is the ratio between the total charge on the sphere and the area of the sphere. So therefore, the total charge is sigma multiplied by the area. And the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared. And we need to use the radius of the spherical conductor. So this will give us q. So sigma is 20 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs per square meter. And then we're going to multiply it by 4 pi times r squared. The radius of the spherical conductor is 0.4 meters squared. And so this is going to be equal to 4.02 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs. So that's the total charge on a sphere. So now let's move on to part B. What is the electric flux that passes through a Gaussian sphere of radius 1.5 meters? So what equation can we use to get that answer? To calculate the electric flux, we can use Gauss's law. The electric flux is equal to the total charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface divided by epsilon sub naught. So we already have Q, which is 4.02 times 10 to the minus 5. We just need to divide it by 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And so this is going to be equal to uh, 4.54 times 10 to the 6th power. And the units are newtons times square meters per coulomb. So that's the electric flux that passes through the Gaussian sphere. As you can see, it's independent of the radius. So now let's move on to the next part. What is the electric field 1.5 meters away from the center of the sphere? So basically, what is the electric field at the edge of the Gaussian surface? Let's see if we can derive a, an equation for that. So let's start with Gauss's law. The electric flux, which is equal to the electric field times the area, is equal to the total charge enclosed divided by epsilon sub naught. Now we know that Q is equal to the surface charge density times the surface area of the spherical conductor, which is 4 pi times r squared. A is the area of the Gaussian surface, which is 4 pi, but using lowercase r squared. So we can cancel 4 pi. And then what we need to do to isolate E is divide both sides by r squared. So therefore, the electric field
is equal to the surface charge density times r squared, that's the radius of the spherical conductor, divided by epsilon sub naught times r squared, the radius of the Gaussian surface. So now let's plug in the data into the equation. The surface charge density is 20 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs per square meter. The radius of the spherical conductor is 40 centimeters, which is 0.4 meters squared. Epsilon, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And the radius of the Gaussian surface, or the Gaussian sphere, is uh, 1.5 meters squared. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So I got 1.61 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. So that is the electric field 1.5 meters away from the center of the spherical conductor. It's about 161,000. Of course, this answer is rounded. It's 160,700. Now, is there another way in which we can get the same answer? Let's see what we can do. So let's start with the electric field equation that we just got. So it's equal to sigma times r squared divided by epsilon sub naught times r squared. Now we know that sigma is equal to q divided by the surface area. And that is the surface area of the spherical conductor, which is 4 pi r squared. So let's replace sigma with this expression. So the electric field is therefore equal to q divided by 4 pi r squared times r squared divided by epsilon sub naught times r squared. So we can cancel these two. And so we have the expression e is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times q over r squared. And as you know, 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught is equal to k. And k is about 9 times 10 to the 9. So now this is going to give us the equation of the electric field of a point charge. So we have k times q divided by r squared. So the spherical conductor can behave as a point charge whenever r is greater than big R. So if you wish to calculate the electric field of a spherical conductor outside of the spherical conductor, it's simply the equation is the same way as calculating the electric field of a point charge. However, if r is less than big R, that is, if you wish to calculate the electric field inside the spherical conductor, the electric field will be equal to zero. On the inside, there's no enclosed charge. All of the charge is on the surface. And so there's only an electric field outside of the spherical conductor, not on the inside. So make sure you understand that. So if we use this equation, we should get the same answer. Let's go ahead and do that. So E is equal to KQ divided by R squared. So K is 9 times 10 to the 9. Q, that was the first thing that we calculated, was 4.02 times 10 to the negative 5, and r is 1.5. So this will give you 1.61 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. So you're going to get the same answer. So that is it for uh, this particular video. 
If you want to find more videos on physics and other topics, feel free to check out my website, video-tutor.net, or you can check out my channel for a more playlists and even on other topics like uh, calculus, uh, pre-cal, if you need help in those chemistry, organic chem, you could find videos on that as well. So thanks for watching.